Hi and welcome to the Writing on the Wall. Today we're going to be looking at the handwritings of William and Kate, Prince and Princess of Wales. And we're going to be posing some questions. Do they do better together or would they be better apart? How will they fill the shoes of their predecessors? So let's start with Prince William. The first thing we notice is his vertical slant. It's up and down. Handwriting analysis makes sense. People who slant to the right reach out to other people and into the future. People who slant back to the left are more self-oriented and oriented to the past. People who write more vertically are balanced. A vertical slant inspires trust. People plan out their responses and people trust them, not only their families, but people around them, even the masses. So we can look at his T-bars to see why he proceeds as he does. And T-bars, where you cross the T on the T-stem, indicate how confident a person is. All these rulers are quite confident. They place their T-bar about two-thirds of the way up. Queen Elizabeth's are sometimes a bit higher. But they're all pretty confident in their ability. So they're very trustworthy people. They are quite deliberate in the way they act. As you can see from the margins on the paper, they center themselves kind of right in the middle of their environment. They're comfortable, they're grounded. So Prince William is the first of the royals we've seen to have an angular formation. This formation looks a bit like a mountaintop and it evokes a spirit of adventure, risk-taking. He likes a challenge, he's not afraid of a challenge. He has an exploratory mode of thinking. He's interested, he's curious, and he, he thinks quickly. He's a smart, smart guy. The way that we connect to people is found in this baseline. We only see it in cursive writing, not in printing. Prince William connects to others with analysis and the connections. He's actually digging for information about other people. So he reacts in a logical manner. His slant is more vertical. He even slows this down in reaction to others with analyzing the situation and then proceeding. So he's quite slow and deliberate and logical in his response to others and to the environment. So he's certainly trustworthy, but some people respond um, to a more warm personality. Enter Kate. Uh, just a wonderful helpmate to him. Her slant of the writing is to the right. She has a high emotional responsiveness to other people. Her form is more rounded. You can think of the shape of an umbrella, a protector, nurturing, growth-oriented. And her connections are what we call garland-shaped or dish-shaped. You can think of a dish as serving other people. And this Kate does naturally. She enjoys giving to other people. So these two complement each other. William has the exploratory thinking, the ability to take on a challenge, and the logical thinking and reasoning, while Kate has the nurturing side, service orientation. Together, they do it all. It's like in Jerry Maguire, the movie, where Tom Cruise says to his love interest, you complete me, that's these two. Kate's sensitiveness to criticism is seen in looped D's and T's. And we can actually see that in the Dictionary of Graphoanalysis. Sensitiveness to criticism is the readiness to feel hurt or slighted. The trait is indicated by loop D's and T's. And we can see here the loop in Catherine's T's. In this writing, the pressure is quite deep. She hangs on to her emotions and feelings. She could hold a grudge with this handwriting. Oh, and if somebody does is completely kind to her, she's going to remember that too. So let's look at Catherine's signature, which is the way that she wants to portray herself to others. This is her public image, rather than the body of the handwriting, which is her private image, how she 
relates to people within her family or close friends. Any psychologist worth their salt would tell you if you're ever in a, a bind, forget about yourself and think of others. And you'll feel much less stressful. She is so service oriented that she can forget about her sensitivity to criticism is seen in the loops in her T's. And she can bring back the slant where she relates quickly to other people. She can take more time and bring it back to a more vertical slant, much more like Williams. So she is a bit different in her public life. But in serving others, she forgets about herself and about how she feels about what other people think of her. Okay, some viewers have asked if Harry and William will reconcile. It would be a shame if they didn't. They're just like two peas in the pod. Where William and Kate complement each other, William and Harry are so similar that they understand each other probably more than anyone else will find in their lives. If you just look at the handwriting, the size, the spacing, they're very much alike. The one thing they have so much in common is what we call a cradle in handwriting. That means that they miss being mothered. And I have seen in videos where these two get together and look at videos of their mom when she was interacting with them when they were kids. If these two could get together and do that, there's no doubt that the rift would mend, at least for a time. The thing is, Harry is super loyal to his mom, and he can't stand the fact that Camilla is around and being accepted. And William is accepting her now, too. Even though they get together for a period of time, the rift is going to continue while Camilla is around, while this, as long as William is accepting of her. Harry can't change. His whole life is focused on his mom. As you can see in his signature, he has an X. So you remember the signature is how he wants other people to see him. He wants other people to know that he's reminded of his mother. He can't accept that William does not do the same. So I think it's going to depend on if Camilla is out of the picture, then these two will get together. It would be such a shame if, if they don't. Okay, so we're ready to answer some of the questions we put forth in the beginning. Are they better together or better apart? They are so much better together. They complement each other and they bring the best out in each other. Will they be able to follow in the footsteps of their predecessors? Yes, uh, they may very well outdo them. They're trustworthy, loyal to each other, to their family, and to the persons that they reign over. They're great models of leadership and parenting. So that's it on William and Kate. Next time I'll be looking at Charles and Camilla, and we'll also be looking at Diana's influence on the monarchy. I'd love it if you'd subscribe and comment, and I'll be picking out the most helpful comment to the channel and contacting you for a free handwriting analysis. This can be done over video if you'd like, or it can be completely confidential between you and me. Okay, thanks for watching.